What's up everybody? Welcome to Morhan. I'm Mr. Beardstone and we're just hanging out in our storage at the moment. So we have had an exceptionally busy week. We've basically been doing lots of stuff around the base. We've been automating lots of our operations so that we can keep our shops stocked a little bit better. And in general, we've just been having a, a right nanny narco with the guys on the server. It's been really good fun. So, uh, I guess I should kind of give you a quick update on what we've been up to. Unheard has uh, got himself some friends over oh, here. Oh, no. They're not that friendly. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> Something about this seems eerily familiar. Oh, uh, classic bear. Oh, that one. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was it. I've put some clothes on, grabbed some fireworks, and uh, I'm going to quickly give you guys a little rundown on uh, what we've been up to. First off, we finished the wheat farm. So it's a manual wheat farm, it's nothing special, I don't need particularly large amounts of wheat, I don't have any villages or anything set up yet. So, yeah, that's basically just to feed the cows, which I showed you last time. Next up, if we run just down here, we have a new corridor shooting off to the right. And that is our cactus farm. Fairly basic cactus farm. Cactus grows, the fence hit it, and it breaks off, goes into the water streams, and gets fed into this barrel over here. Through here, in one of our side rooms, we have finally sorted out our library. So we've got a couple of brewing stands in here for now. They will end up with their own building in the main uh, town of Port Beardsley, but uh, for now that's where they sit. So we've decorated this room quite nicely, you know, just a few little bits here and there just to make it a bit more interesting. And um, yeah, you may be wondering w which one I actually enchant on, and that would be this one. So this actually gives me the 30 levels that I need. I don't actually have anything to throw in there. We've got 15 bookshelves around here that pop up when you walk on them. Fairly basic systems, probably seen it before. Uh, especially if you've watched my Yaptopia series, I've got it in there as well. But uh, that works a treat. So we've also been doing a little bit of work over here in Port Beardsley, and if I show you this view, you'll see a shiny new building. Those of you who have been joining us on stream will of course have an idea of what this is. And uh, yeah, it's our super smelter. So it's got 32 furnaces, which are currently going as you can see. Um, we've got loading things either side, so you put your fuel in this side, you put whatever it is you want to cook in that side, and then you've got two levers. So I wanted them to distribute evenly, because a common problem with these is if they're sort of loading up and then getting set off and coming back, they quite often some of the furnaces here can end up with, you know, everything and the ones here don't get utilised as much. So what I've done is I've created a circle loop of track that goes all the way around on the top to fill in the uh, smeltables and the bottom to put in the fuel. And then I've got a couple of levers. So what this lever does is actually switch tracks. So I can take the minecarts off the tracks and then they feed down and they come down here. So if we look through this little window here. Oh, okay. I need to need to replace that window. So if you look through this window here, either way, we can come up here. So we've got the lower track and the track switcher changes this. And then it will send the cart down there so it can load up again. And we've got a similar thing on the other side for the other track. So quite simple to operate. You basically... Flick that switch to make sure the tracks are on loop mode. Once you've loaded the carts up, you flick this switch, which sends them off just by powering these blocks here behind them. Once everything's cooked, it follows these hopper lines from each side. They go into dispensers, which shoot the goods into the water stream, and for no apparent reason, they then shoot up, go across, flow down, and feed into this chest. And this thing works a treat, I have to say. It's, you know, not the fastest, not the most efficient, but it looks nice, and it does the job. It's perfect for me, so uh, I'm happy with that. And we should hear the minecarts come to a stop. There we go, so they have returned to their original positions. We've also been hard at work here over on the Whispering Grove, which is our flower forest island, and we've created ourselves a few flower farms. So they're a fairly basic design, not my own, but uh, I cannot remember off the top of my head where I got them from. It was somewhere on the YouTubes, but that's basically because I'd never really worked with redstone on Java before at this point. So um, yeah, if we climb up here, oh, uh, we can see how they work. They're fairly basic. They're just on a repeater timer. And if we flick this switch, oh, there we go. 
what will happen is the timer will fire, trapdoors lift up, the bone mill fires off, and then the water gets released and everything gets washed down. And each of these will produce different flowers because of the way that the flower forest biomes work, which is why we've got a few of them. So we've also got, oh, let me, let me get up here. We've also got another one here, which does uh, more of the sort of colored tulips and things like that. But uh, yeah, they all feed into this water stream, they shoot up these pipes, and they go into a sorting system over here. And all the seeds get sorted out independently, pumped through into these composters, and get turned into bone meal, which I have actually just fed back into that machine to show you for demonstration purposes. But uh, yeah, this area needs a lot of work. It's basically just a mess of contraptions and machinery at the moment. I've used lots of the prismarine that we recovered from the Ocean Temple clear out. But uh, for now, I'm going to quickly run and turn this off and we'll move on to the next area. So just next to our flower island, the Whispering Grove over there, we have this selection of islands, which doesn't have a portal or a name yet, but I'm sure we'll come up with one. But essentially, it's going to be just one giant factory. And this factory is producing logs for us. So we've used one of Il Mango's latest designs, which we've built here, and we certainly didn't have any problems. We didn't die at all. No, no, no. We had we had no problems making a TNT duper for the first time using complicated redstone, which we don't do very well at all. No, no problems whatsoever. Yeah, fifty-seven deaths I'm on now. Fantastic. But uh, yeah, this was this was a challenge to build. One wrong timer here or there could essentially blow that up or blow the floor up or blow me up or blow the whole machine up um but yeah after after many many attempts at uh, trying to do it correctly we did eventually get it working and this thing kicks out about six to eight thousand wood per hour depending on what tree you've got in there and that all feeds down into our storage room down here basically the logs get fed out of there when you're afking over there and the tnt drops down blows up the logs they go into the water stream feed around there and get sorted into boxes over here and I've actually put shulkers down the bottom so that they can automatically load into shulkers although I've clearly put them on the wrong way because that's going to get annoying if they keep knocking off the frames isn't it? So yeah we'll have to make a slight adjustment there to make that work better. We're going to leave the cutoff and we're going to go join the rest of the world and I want to go to the shopping district to go check out my shops because I've not been there for about a week or so. I'm hoping that with the server being a bit busier I've got some good diamonds sitting there waiting for me and uh, yeah, we, we did actually put the logs on a half price sale once we got our mega tree contraption finished. So I'm hoping we've made a few diamonds there. So uh, let's fly down this disaster of a road, which will be a future project, I promise, and uh, see what we've got waiting for us. Okay, so we've got a few shops to check. We've had a couple of new shops pop up here as well. We've got the library, which is actually in direct competition with Books A Billion. And uh, we also have a blaze rod shop, which is quite handy. Uh, these are both Siphon Shops, who's one of the new guys on the server, so good to see him getting stuck right in over there. Oh, ow, standard. Uh, so, we need to check Sir Logs a lot, that's a lot of terracotta, and also the end ship over there. We do still need to name this shop. Um, but yeah, we're going to check these out and see how many diamonds we have. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Ah, oh, come on. Right, so it's been a week now, and our logs have been half price, and we've still not sold any logs. It's, look, it's one diamond for two stacks of logs, and no one's buying them. We've not sold any ter terracotta, so we need to sort that out as well. Uh, and we've not sold any elytras or shulkers either. So, we need to come up with a plan. Okay, so let's think. We need to increase our sales. We've got some pretty big shops. They're easily visible, but no one's buying anything. So we need to either create demand, or maybe we need to do a marketing campaign. Yeah, maybe a marketing campaign is the way forward. Do you reckon we could do some leaflet drops or come up with something funky to uh, promote our shops? I think maybe that's the thing to do, isn't it? Okay, how are we going to... How are we going to do this promotion? I've been thinking, and we've got our little advert billboards over here by the mall, but this whole area, it's kind of always been a working progress, but it's been like that for about six weeks, pretty much, or eight weeks even, since I joined the server. So my thinking is, I'm going to offer to build a shopping hub portal. So I'll pull this a bit further away from the station that Kelsey's been working on, 
and you know just move it down here a little bit not too far but actually make a proper shopping district portal make it all nicey nicey and uh, then use it for our own nefarious purposes yes we're going to be sneaky beardstone this week <laughs> Yes. So I've got an idea of what I might do. Uh, I'm basically thinking, we'll get some dispensers, we'll get some paper, we'll rename said paper, we'll make some leaflets, and when people come through the portal, it will trigger the dispensers and put some leaflets in their inventory, some flyers that will promote our shops, possibly some coupons occasionally, just to uh, give them some discounts, and... You know, if people like the idea, we could even then sell space inside the dispensers for other people to promote their businesses as well. But for now, let's focus purely on ourselves, because that's what we're doing, because these signs are doing nothing. No one seems to want to buy our logs. Uh, and yeah, th these little billboards for our other shops are not working either. Let's get cracking. So for my very first modern build, I have to say, I am pretty pleased with how this has come out. So you may notice there's a little bit more here than what you saw at the end of the time lapse, and apologies for that, there was a bit of an issue with the end of the footage, and uh, I won't go into details, but it's safe to say that's not coming back. So yeah, let me just quickly show you the last few bits here. So I have added, obviously, water into the ponds that you saw, saw me building on the time lapse, and uh, I've added a few bits inside. And uh, yeah, just made it all nicey-nicey, but most importantly, we have a very simple dispensers, cuts a couple of dispensers with um, iron pressure plates on top, and when you run over those, if you can hear the click, that will um, put items, it will spit items out at the player that runs over it. So what I've done is I've created flyers for my different businesses, and we are going to put these in the machine. Oh fire some fireworks in celebration and yeah so we're advertising so logs a lots terracotta and beardscapes and landscapes and the idea is when a fellow paper hat runs over they will get randomly dispensed leaflets from these machines and um yeah so that is advertising the terracotta this time and that is as simple as it gets 
And with that, I guess we're at the end of today's episode. So I just want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has made it this far in watching the episode. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit that like button and do remember to leave a comment because it does help the video get in front of more people, which is, uh, you know, that's cool because we can, we can get more people involved in this, right? And uh, if you are new here, please do hit that subscribe button and even that little notification bell and uh, you'll always find out when I've got a new video coming out. Lastly, I do also stream on Twitch on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 6pm GMT. So do come hang out with us there as well. We generally have a laugh and uh, sometimes we even get some building done, which is nice. In the meantime, I guess, I need to just uh, wait for some fellow paper hats to come along and fall into my fall into my advertising trap so i'm just going to uh i'm just going to wait and see what happens i could be here a while <laughs>